Hey Wargamers, the new Tau Codex is almost here. We've talked already about Warlord traits, about signature systems, about the Sept tenants, but the one thing that we haven't talked about yet are the stratagems. So before the Codex is released, I wanna talk about those, and that way once the Codex actually hits, we can spend our time talking about some more interesting things like army lists and unit reviews, stuff like that. So uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we do that though, I wanna say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, hit subscribe. That way you don't miss any of that upcoming Tau content. Okay, so today again is gonna be a very casual peruse through the stratagems. I will go over each one individually and I'll basically say whether or not I think this is something you'll use frequently, infrequently, or almost never. Um, and we'll kind of talk about things that it's gonna be good for and things that it's probably not gonna be good for. All right, so let's get started. The first stratagem is a multi-spectrum sensor suite. This used to be a signature system in the old codex. Now it's a stratagem. And before we actually get into the stratagem itself, I wanna just talk about this whole thing about certain things that were signature systems now becoming stratagems. In general, I think this is probably a fine thing. I think it's actually fairly good. Uh, on one hand, yes, you are limited in the amount of times you can do it because you have to pay command points and you can only do it once per turn, that sort of thing, or once per phase. But for the most part, I think this is actually a fairly good workaround. Uh, the way that you used to be able to build buff commanders was uh, not necessarily a very, a very fun or a very fluffy way of doing it. And so if Games Workshop wanted to move us away from doing that, they were going to have to put a restriction on the number of signature systems that uh, individual can take or that your army can take and so that meant that a lot of those abilities that were in signature systems before are not going to be accessible because you're going to have to prioritize the better ones. Uh, by moving some of these signature systems into stratagems, you still have access to those abilities without having to deal with taking another signature system or figuring a way to make that happen and uh, especially with the commander limit this makes a lot of sense giving, given the paradigm that Games Workshop has established for us. So having these signature systems be stratagems works out fairly well because you can still take you know, the, the signature systems that are still signature systems, but then on top of it, you can t use these stratagems and still have access to those abilities, whereas if they remain signature systems, you wouldn't have access to them. So, you know, pros and cons, but overall I think this is probably a good thing. So the multi-spectrum sensor suite is one of those uh, signature systems, well that is now a stratagem, and basically how it works is you select a unit before it fires, any unit that it targets does not benefit from cover. So essentially this means that you're increasing the AP of your weapons by one, and you know you're going to use this Sometimes, I mean, that minus one AP is not a huge deal necessarily, depending on the target. Um, it can help, you'll use it when you need that little extra oomph, but a lot of the time the, the units that you're targeting in cover are going to be um, things that you're gonna be bringing heavy weapons with anyway. So, you know, I think this is useful, especially if you are, um, trying to go in with something like a hazard suit because it only works on battle suits. If you go in with a, you know, something with a bunch of low AP weaponry, uh, you know, hazard suits with, with uh, burst cannons or crisis suits with flamers, um, this is going to give you a better shot at dislodging things from cover. But in general, probably breachers might be a better choice there. So uh, this is something that you can use if you came ill-prepared for cover, and it will be a little bit of a Band-Aid, but it's not something that I would necessarily rely on in my army building strategy. The next stratagem is fail-safe detonator. This used to be a system as well as now a stratagem for one CP. When a battle suit unit is destroyed, you roll a D6 for each unit within three inches of that unit, and uh, on a four up, they take a mortal wound. So, you know, in most cases, you're gonna be lucky if you get one mortal wound off. Um, you know, you're probably not gonna have a battle suit unit surrounded by, you know, five, 10 units. It's probably gonna be one to three units max, probably. And if each of those have a 50% chance, you know, you're averaging like 1.5 mortal wounds. Uh, unless it was something like Mortarian um, or like some big bad guy right next to a unit that, um, you know, it had one wound left and I need that one mortal wound to really finish him off, uh, I wouldn't bother. If it, if it was down to one wound and this could be it, yeah, I'll, 
I'll take that shot and I'll spend the command point. But in general, like one to two mortal wounds doesn't really seem worth a, a whole command point. So this seems like it's gonna be pretty infrequently used. Automated Repair System is a 2CP stratagem that allows you to restore D3 wounds to a battle suit or vehicle. In general, I think this is probably gonna be most useful on things like Long Strike or maybe Commanders uh, throughout their, their life cycle because these are guys that A, if it's Long Strike, or another hammerhead, you're gonna to wanna to keep them at their higher tiers, and there's no other way to deal with that. For battle suits like the Riptide, you have the ability to use the Stimulant Injector uh, stratagem, but for hammerheads, for long strike, you don't have access to that. So uh, using this to keep them at their top tier, like right when they just lose that, that one wound to drop them down to the second or third tier, you can use this to bump them back up, and, and that's fairly useful. Long Strike does have some redundancies built into his profile that allow him to almost always shoot at a, at a two plus to hit. Um, so if you're using him primarily just, just for that, then maybe you don't care so much about, about restoring his wounds, but overall keeping them on the battlefield longer is a good thing. You can also use it for your commanders when they're you know, taking a couple incidental wounds and you just wanna you know, top them off and keep them a little bit more stable on the battlefield. And then finally for things like Riptides or um, maybe a Broadside or a Ghost Kill, if it's just down to a couple wounds and I'm nervous that it's going to be, um, you know, you, they're going to use just enough firepower to kill it off, maybe I'll use this to bump them back up and keep them on the table for another turn. Um, you can pair that pretty effectively with the Stimulant Injector stratagem so that so that they can uh, stay on the board and stay at full effectiveness for that extra turn um, until they you run out of command points or, or they uh, die. So there is some play there, and I think this is something that you'll use probably once a game, you know, depending on your army composition. I think there's plenty of different ways that you can use it, and uh, keeping things alive, that's good. The NeuroWeb System Jammer, this again was a piece of war gear that is now a stratagem. For two command points, you select an enemy unit within 18 inches of a commander. That unit now has minus one to hit. I think like this is a great stratagem in general. It was better as war gear though. Um, the idea that you have to spend two command points to get minus one to hit, which is an ability that plenty of other armies have just by taking a unit or as a um, craft world trait or anything like that, that seems a little heavy handed. I, I'm not super enthusiastic about the two command point cost there, so I'm not sure how much um, I'm gonna actually value that. But the, the stratagem itself, you know, if, if there's a really high damage, high output unit uh, that's hitting on twos and you move it to threes, that's really not um, gonna make that big of a difference on the number of shots that actually hit you. But if there's a like a big unit orc boys or something like like I don't know uh, like Ludas or something, and you're trying to make them you know miss twice as much or I guess hit half as often, um, then this could actually have a pretty big impact on their overall damage output. So it's pretty situational in terms of which units you'd want to use it use it on. You have to do the cost benefit of how much damage they're going to do and how much damage you're uh, mitigating by using this stratagem, but overall, I think it's I think it's too expensive for me to use very frequently. Repulsor Impact Field. Anytime an enemy unit successfully charges you, you can pay one command point, and then for each unit or each model in that unit that ends up within three inches of your unit, you roll a d6. On a six, they take a mortal wound. Um, you know, this is a, a cool idea. Uh, I'm trying to think of a time that that's actually going to make a difference for you though. And, and you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but overall, like you need a large number of bodies to actually be able to generate enough sixes. And um, in that case, like you're probably talking about something like gene stealers or guardsmen or something, I don't know, some sort of uh, big blob unit that you're really gonna get some bang for your buck on this. But in that case, you're probably going to be overwhelmed by attacks anyway. So taking out, you know, 16% of them, 17% uh, of them probably isn't going to make that big of a deal, um, big of a difference. So I don't think this is really something you're going to actually want to use that often. It's neat in concept, but having to roll a six in order to make this effect proc, proc is, uh, is unfortunate. I don't think you're going to actually get that much mileage out of it. And so I'm probably not going to use it very often. 
Command and control node, again, it used to be a signature system for one CP, a battle suit unit within six inches of your commander can reroll wounds, uh, which I think is really good. Um, I, I think you'll be using this pretty frequently, especially if you pair it with something like um, a Heavy Burst Cannon Riptide or um, an Arvarna or even Broadsides. Uh, I think this makes a lot of a lot of sense and I think it, it works out fairly well. Yes, it's one command point and I'd rather have it be free, but for one command point, being able to re-roll wounds, especially if you're doing something like Strength 6 uh, and you're trying to damage a vehicle um, or something with a, a higher toughness, being able to re-roll those wounds uh, is going to make a big difference for you. So yeah, I think that this is a pretty good one that you're going to use fairly often. Right. EMP grenades. They took our EMP grenades away and they turned it into a stratagem. This one, this one feels a little petty. Like you couldn't just let us have the EMP grenades, really. <laughs> but yeah, so one CP. If a uh, unit throws a photon grenade uh, and it hits, it does D3 mortal wounds to a vehicle. Um, yeah, again, it's only it's only D3 mortal wounds. I would. That's that's not that much. Um, but again, if you're in a situation where there's a vehicle and it has two wounds left and you really need to finish it off, that one CP might be worth it. Hunting grounds for one CP. If a unit of crude hounds successfully makes a charge, you can have any unit within, or any crude unit within 12 inches reroll their charges. So, you know, that's great if, if you are bringing crude hounds and you want your crude to get into combat, but overall, I think this is pretty low down on my list of priorities just because i'm not going to be bringing crude hounds and i'm you know i'm i'm warming up on crude but i don't think that this is really the way that i'd want to use my cp uplinked marker lights this is uh, for one cp you explode a marker light hit just like in chapter approved yeah this is a good one you're going to want to use it uh, especially when you are really hoping for that plus one to hit at the five marker light level. It's gonna make that a lot easier. And so early on in the game especially, this is gonna be something that's valuable because you're gonna have more of your army left. And so using this early on is going to give you a bigger advantage uh, going into the later turns. Branch Nova Charge for one CP, your Riptide can take two of the three Nova Charge abilities. Yes, this is good. Um, you're almost always gonna wanna take the weapon and the shield benefits, but if it's the end of the game, there's not a lot that's gonna be threatening your Riptide and uh, you need to capture an objective or get line breaker or something like that. Taking the weapon and the thrust move or you know even the shield and the thrust move Either of those um, are gonna be good options later on. But primarily in the early game, you're gonna to wanna to focus on his damage output and uh, keeping him alive. So probably go with those two. Yeah, I think this is worth one CP. Support turret replacement. For one CP, you can replace a destroyed turret in a fire warrior unit. No, um, I'm not gonna use this one ever because uh, I'm not counting on turrets to be my damage dealers. I'm not gonna spend one CP to replace a little dinky turret no thank you point defense targeting relay for one cp a vehicle can overwatch on five plus instead of sixes i'm not clear on how this interacts with the tau sept tenant but uh, overall I, this doesn't seem that great i mean maybe if you're being charged by some you know beat stick unit it only has a couple wounds left and you really are counting on just one more hammerhead hit to uh, knock it out that's that might be worth it but Overall, I don't think you're going to gain that much in terms of your overall damage output, and the combat, you know, is probably going to go the same way. You're probably still going to die, so um, probably not worth the CP in most cases, unless you're really just looking to, uh, you know, top off a unit. And Orbital Ion Beam. Uh, this one is really cool, and I like the idea of it, but I'm not convinced that it's going to actually yield. Um, that great of outcome in most cases, particularly because it's three command points. So uh, how this works is a commander that hasn't moved or deep striked, or you know, yeah, manta striked, manta struck, whatever, um, hasn't done either of those things. It selects two points, 2d6 inches apart, so it's a variable outcome. It could be two inches apart, it could be 12 inches apart, uh, which is a big deal. Um, you pick those two points and every unit in between those two points suffers D3 mortal wounds on a four up. Uh, if it's a character, it's a five up. So this is this is good if you can get you know a 12 inch band and, and get like 10 units in there um, and really just 
take them out. So you know, keep this in mind. It could be a way to exploit some uh, lazy deployment on your opponent's behalf. But overall, it just seems like you're not going to get that many units in that line. And so overall, this is probably going to be a very infrequent one that you use. But if you are able to line up that that money shot and just take out a bunch of um, take out a bunch of units with a single. Um, beam that would be pretty sweet uh, i just don't think it's going to happen that often and it's so expensive that um, i would have to be very confident that i was able to get a large number of wounds out of this and and i'm not because it's a variable it's a variable length of beam and it's a variable damage output so that's a lot of moving parts and probably not worth the cp in most situations breach and clear this is one of the ones that we saw in the preview for one command point Breacher teams can reroll wounds against units in cover. I love it, I think it's great. Uh, this makes a big difference for breachers just because uh, in the past they struggled a little bit with being able to really land those wounds. They don't have uh, as many shots as you would hope based on uh, what they're trying to do or their weapon profile. And so this makes up for that uh, in a big way. So I think this is a really nice stratagem and makes breachers a lot more effective if you spend the command point on them. So yeah, uh, if you're bringing breachers, this seems like a good choice. Recon sweep for 1CP. Pathfinders can move 2d6 inches in the shooting phase, but they can't shoot. Um, so if, if you don't need marker lights or your pathfinders are on the open and they need to get into cover or something like that, this seems like a good option. Uh, again, at the end of the game, if you need to have them grab an objective, that works too. Um, you know, overall, I think this is a, a fairly situational thing. I don't think you're going to use it every game, but it does have some nice applications and gives you some flexibility with your Pathfinders that you didn't have before. Instead of them just being a marker light base or, you know, if you are bringing those, those specialty weapons, an uh, offensive platform for those, now you're having a little bit more of a uh, scouty ability in them. And I, I like that. I think that that works out nicely and gives us some tactical flexibility that we didn't have before. So, you know, late game, if you need, if you need some Pathfinders to grab an objective, seems like a, a good choice. Wall of Mirrors, we talked about this one before. Uh, it basically allows a ghost kill to redeploy a unit of nearby stealth suits um, 12 inches away, but more than nine inches away from an opponent. I think this is fairly good. Um, if you really want to do some um, some complicated maneuvers in order to get homing beacons uh, closer to the enemy uh, because of the way that they've changed, this does unlock a way to do that. It's a lot of investment, and so I wouldn't necessarily build an army around this stratagem. But in a uh, pinch, when you have a ghost kill and some stealth suits that are getting you know, outflanked or deep strike down or something like that, uh, this can help save those, uh, save those stealth suits. I mean, they're not gonna be super far away, but it's a nice reactionary move and can give you some distance, which is always good. So overall, fairly good stratagem. Yeah, I'll use it. Stimulant Injector, this is one we mentioned earlier. Uh, for a battle suit with 10 or more wounds, you can have it act as if it was in the top tier of its wound bracket, um, regardless of how many wounds it has. So this is great because it makes your Yvaras, your Avarnas, your Riptides um, able to actually function at peak performance even if they only have like one or two wounds left. And I think this is actually somewhat thematic based on what you actually expect stimulants to do. Um, I like. You know, they it makes them awesome for a short period of time, uh, which you know, like that seems that seems right. But it also is a really nice tool. I, in some ways, this uh, is way better than just having the you know six up feel no pain type rule because you know, let's say you're you know at like a couple wounds left, you're basically ignoring like ten wounds worth of damage um, every time you spend this CP. So that's a pretty good value for for one cp is ignoring 10 wounds uh, on a riptide so uh, i like that i think it works out very well unfortunately you can only use it once per phase um, so you can only affect one riptide per phase in match play which you know that probably makes sense but uh yeah i i like this i think this is a great way to keep your riptides in the game and really get that last little bit of power out them power out of them uh, and you can uh pair that with the repair system to kind of keep them in the game longer. I really, 
I really, like I said, I really like this one. Um, and I, I plan on using it fairly frequently. Probably not, you know, when it's only lost like four wounds or, you know, I guess half of its wounds, I'm probably not going to use it then. But when it's down in that lower bracket, yeah, I'm going to be using it every turn. Positional relay for two CP, you basically turn a recon drone into a homing beacon. Um, I like this because it doesn't uh, pigeonhole you into taking stealth suits for homing beacons. You can use pathfinders and recon drones, but the downside there is that um, you have to get the recon drone in a position where you want a deep striker. And that can happen one of two ways. One, you put your pathfinders or your recon drone on a suicide mission and he just goes for it um, and he gets in a position that he needs. I think that that's pretty risky and unlikely to actually happen, but who knows? Maybe if your opponent isn't paying attention, uh, you could use that. Otherwise, uh, if your pathfinders or your recon drone get charged, that uh, is probably the more likely outcome and you can use this as a really effective uh, counter-strike mechanism. Uh, but for two CP, you know, yeah, I guess if there's a, like, if I am hitting the panic button and say, oh, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, I need some deep strikers right here, right now, two CP is probably a fine uh, points, fine level to spend. But if I'm trying to just go for it, uh, you know, I'd rather have this be one CP. But yeah, I think the bigger issue here is just getting the recon drone into position. Overall, it's a fine strategy. I mean, it gives you some more flexibility, but uh, probably fairly infrequent because you're not going to be taking recon drones that often and uh, there's this issue of actually getting the recon drone where you need to be. So it's okay, not great, but okay. All right, so now we get into the SEP specific stratagems. These are only available to uh, detachments that have their particular SEP and there's actually some really nice ones in here. So let's start with Focus Fire, which is the Tau SEP stratagem. For three CP, yeah, that's expensive. Uh, a unit that has already been damaged by a Tau Empire unit has uh, plus one to wound against it by all other Tau Empire units. Not a Tau Empire, Tau Sept. It's an important distinction. I wish that was a little bit clearer, uh, but yeah, Tau Sept units. Um, so this is this is awesome. This is a great uh, stratagem to use turn one, turn two, when you really need to plow down a high priority target. It's not going to be a great tar a great stratagem in the later phases of the game, or if you're playing an opponent that doesn't have like this one beat stick unit that you need to take out. If they are, you know, a death by a thousand cuts army, don't bother with this. It's a waste of CP because that taking out that one unit is not necessarily going to make a difference. Um, but if you're going up, up against like Mortarian or Magnus or some other like big bad scary thing, this is awesome. It also uh, works fairly nicely with uh, things like Dark Strider, which can give you know plus one to wound himself, um, and like sniper drones, which are going to be needing uh, sixes to inflict an additional mortal wound normally, but with this, they're gonna need fives. So that doubles the amount of mortal wounds that sniper drones are gonna be doing. Keep in mind though, that's not gonna necessarily, that's probably not gonna work with a, um, with them sniping characters very well because you have to inflict the damage on the character first. And so you need to have like multiple units of sniper drones in order to make this work. And at that point, you're affecting very few units with this strategy. And I don't think it's worth a three CP. But if there's a unit that your entire army can target, yeah, this seems pretty awesome. Strike and Fade is the Dalith stratagem. For one CP, you basically have jump, shoot, jump. You can move up to six inches in the shooting phase uh, after shooting. So yeah, this is nice, I like it. You know, we love jump, shoot, jump. And I probably wouldn't use this every turn, but in certain situations where there's, uh, you know, appropriate cover or line of sight blocking terrain, and I need to just get that, that range uh, that you used to be able to do with jump, shoot, jump, um, this seems like a, a valuable a valuable choice. But you have to take the Dallas Sept, which I'm probably not gonna do in the first place. So, you know, good stratagem, bad Sept. Um, experimental weaponry, this is something we saw in the previews. It allows you to um, re-roll one of the die in a randomly determined weapon output. So if it's like a heavy 2d6, you can roll one of those d6 to determine how many shots it gets. Um, and that's one CP. Uh, this pairs really nicely with the command point reroll, uh, so you can do both at the same time and, and you know augment the the firing capability of a single unit. But 
you know, uh, you're putting C two CP into another random outcome. So I probably wouldn't do that in most cases, but it, like if it's a 2D six shot and you get one six and one one, yeah, I might spend that one command point to get um, another, you know, an potentially another six. Uh, you know, you can only get, it, ca it can't get any worse if you have a six and a one and you reroll the one, right? So uh, yeah, that seems like a fairly good uh, stratagem. And for Borkan, which has some nice options, in terms of set tenants and relics, yeah, I like this. Hot Blooded is the viewer loss stratagem for two CP. An infantry unit can fire twice, uh, but has to fire against the closest enemy unit. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, if you're taking a giant blob of fire warriors and a fire blade, that's six shots coming out of them uh, if they are going to be, you know, within rapid fire range. So. Uh, that's nothing to scoff at, you know, like let's say 30 times 6 is 180 shots. That's 180 shots, strength 5, yeah, there's no AP, but it's 180 shots, so you really can't complain that much. That will take care of a lot of stuff. So um, for 2 CP, yeah, I would take this. This seems pretty good. Orbital Marker Distribution Uplink is a 2 CP stratagem that is uh, for the Sakia Sept, or Sakia Sept, however you pronounce it. It basically allows you to put a marker light on a targeted unit and all units within six inches of it. But yeah, it's one marker light hit only and it's just not, not that great. Um, I'm not gonna pay two CP for a couple of marker light hits um, in general. That's, that's not gonna be that useful, I think. I think there are other ways that you should be getting marker lights and you shouldn't be relying on this. But you know, I guess maybe at the end of end of the game if all your pathfinders or marker light sources are dead and you really need that that extra little oomph it might be worth it but at that point you're probably not going to have two cp left to spend anyway so this seems like a pretty rare occurrence that this would actually be worth it drop zone clear for two cp is a farsight enclave stratagem and it allows battle suit units that have arrived via manta strike to uh, add one to hit the turn that they arrive this is, uh, this is pretty nice. It works out well with the uh, Farsight uh, Sept Tenant, allowing them to, to um, do better at wounding in close range. But here, uh, I, I like this. I mean, I, it's not going to be useful in small units. Like if you bring, you know, a unit of three crisis suits with, um, well, with flamers, it would be absolutely useless. But, you know, with something else like plasma rifles, let's say, you know, you're not going to get that mileage out of it. But if you bring a big blob of, crisis suits and plop them down with fusion blasters yeah this is going to be a really nice um, way to make sure those fusion blaster hits land so yeah I, for 2 cp you're going to have to have a big unit to make it worth it but in those cases it's probably going to pay off very nicely for you all right so that's a rundown of all the stratagems uh, i think in general there are some really nice ones in there there's also some in there Hopefully you're able to tell that I don't think you should invest the points in. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. What are the stratagems that you are most excited about? Which are the stratagems that you think you're never gonna use? Either way, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching and of course, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, this video was made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you like this video, consider heading on over to Patreon and joining our community there. Uh, special thanks to No Excuses Panda, Jordan, Paul Luters, Giovanni DiMaggio, Tao Oswell, Deverson, Jared Egeler, Nick Steele, Max Harrison, and Yuhai Penguin.